Okay. And the walk begins. Okay. So, you're God. <laughs> I, I know it's a lot. <laughs> Just take it in. <laughs> ah, the path is straight. <laughs> and sometimes curvy. And sometimes upside down. And sometimes inside out. But it's an, a beautiful adventure, right? Yeah. And it's not about figuring it out. It's about discovering all the beauty as we go on the adventure, like this little squirrel right here. Look, come, come, look inside here. Oh yeah, look inside here. See the beauty? Hi, baby. Hi, how are you? Good morning. Hi. And the squirrel's also God, right? Squirrel. And we're gonna bring you in that next time, okay? We love you. I love you, squirrel. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. We and so, this totem pole, it's also God, right? So now let's just look at the totem pole. We're just gonna do a little tiny. So, starting from the roots of the tree and ascending up, we stand on the shoulders of our ancestors as monkeys. <laughs> and we let go of our monkey mind and we ascend up into the highest reaches of heaven and infinity. And uh, sometimes we feel like a lion and we're bold and we're courageous and we have a lot of courage. And other times we feel like little tiny ants crawling on the ground or just the middle way where we're just plants hanging out in the center domain. But at the same time as we cross the streets of life, We accept the good, the bad, and the ugly. And it's about being the steeple and the cathedral of your own life. Because your body's a temple. And so when we walk with our sticks. <laughs> our, our unicorn hats. <laughs> on our unicorn hats. <laughs> magic rolls out. But there's always an arrow pointing out and in. So let's look at that for a second. See that? Now stand in between both of those arrows. You can just face out like the ocean. There you go. Look, now stop. So when you face in, you understand that you're the creator of everything that ever was. And when you look out, you can see the projected holographic I love you field. And then you can decide where you want to go. Positive or negative. And you know what? That's like my favorite card is like the chariot card. Which way are we gonna go? The, the dark side or the light side? Yeah. And we can dance in the dark and we can discover the shadow. <laughs> and there's a purpose for the shadow because remember when we talked about the movie Inside Out? Mm -hmm. We talked about sadness and the purpose of sadness. And Joy was always busting on sadness. She would give her things to do to distract her, to get her out of the way because she didn't want her in the head of the little girl. But when she realized sadness is exactly what the little girl needed is to feel her tears so she could process her pain and then return to the glory of her own nature so as we continue our hike we're on week two right yeah week two we're on week two and we are um melting and when we melt we have to process our feelings because we're getting into deeper layers of stored akashic records in our adipose tissue which are our body files so we talked about the movie the egg which is andy weir's viral short i will put a link in the bottom so those of you who want to check that out because somerset and i watched it and it was completely transformational And so we're walking on the path of I remember who I am-ness, right? <laughs> and what did God tell Andy after he got hit by that ice cream truck? <laughs> he said, remember your memory. <laughs> uh, no. Everything's you. Everything is you. Yeah. 
There's only you and me. There's only God. I'm here. Hi. 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 See that? There's only God. And God is ever omnipresent. Beautiful soul. Good morning. Good morning. So he said, I'm all those people down there. And God said, yes, you're the people driving the car. You're the people creating war. You're the people crossing the street. You're the people loving each other. You're all of it. And you're simultaneously existing on multiple dimensions in the present moment as differentiation, like white light fractaling out into a holographic rainbow. Let's go over here and talk about thought because you have some magical things to share because of how you connect with this Egyptian god being. <laughs> oh. Yeah, introduce us. Tell us everything you know. This is Thoth. He'd uh, bring people across the River Nile to the uh, underworld. Uh, he's also depicted as a bird sometimes. And I think he's like the son of Horus and Set, but I'm not sure. I'm not too sure. What did you tell me about him? The emerald well, something? Well, the emerald tablets. He was the one who brought writing down and information. Oh, that's right. And you said... Here, can you do that pose next to him? What pose? The same pose he's doing. And tell me which direction you're pointing. What are you pointing at? The mountains. The mountains? And also, didn't you say Point Doom? It said Point Doom, but now I feel it's not that way. Where is it? straight up into the, these mountains, straight this way. Point Doom's that way. This so, like, what do you have in common with Thoth? Everything. <laughs> He's a writer. <laughs> He's a writer. And you're a writer. Yeah, and my um, ancestor was, um, what the heck is his name? I can't remember anything. Yeah, but you know what, your mom and your dad. Oh yeah, they had a writer's conference. But even more so, like my, oh, my ancestor was Cicero, who was like the Roman Senate's uh, orator and writer and stuff. That's your lineage? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you made that beautiful shirt that you're wearing. I did make this. So you're an artist. So you write and you do tie dyes. Yeah. And you paint. You're an incredible painter. We're going to have an art exhibit at my house, right? <laughs> yes. Someday. No, in September. I'm okay. already planning it. <laughs> and you're and you're gonna get a ukulele. My ukulele is on its way to me. Yeah, you ordered it. No, but it's gonna come. It's coming. Okay, <laughs> it's but coming. you found it though. <laughs> it's somewhere out there. In it's the somewhere and it's, and it's on its way. Yeah. And you know you can go underneath here. No, I didn't know that. Tell me what's down here. Um, well, you can pull these things up and you can actually go down underneath. There used to be a railroad station. A railroad station underground in Venice. Yeah. Ooh, you have a lot of interesting facts inside there. <laughs> Not bad. Okay, let's let's continue on. Thank you, Thoth. See you later. Okay, and then we have this other glorious statue here. Uh, which, he could be pointing at this, which is, you know, in um, ancient Greece, what they would teach the beings was that you had to have your physical, mental, emotional and spiritual bodies strong so that's what the olympics was you wanted they wanted you to be good in philosophy and uh the esoteric and physiology because they wanted the human to be completely balanced and so venice is like a creative cornucopia of like expressing your artistic genius so a lot of awake beings are in Venice, wouldn't you say? I would say yes. And what about John Goodfellow? He's pretty awake. <laughs> John Goodfellow is alive and well. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to do another interview with him, right? Yes. Because that was so interesting. We he looked was at his interesting. black and white shirt and then he just dropped all this knowledge on us. I know, that was amazing. You never know who you're gonna meet in Venice. So, yes. okay, so this is, um, the 10 ends, it goes right across the country, and it ends in Venice. It dumps you right in like Santa Monica, right to the Pacific Ocean. 
and Venice reminds me of Venus. And that was a planet, just like Earth, that evolved out of 3D into 4D, which is opening up the heart chakra, into 5D, which was like communicating all these wonderful truths, into 6D, which is being able to use your mental capacities to manifest, and then dot, 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 it just keeps raising its vibration. And so I'm gonna just get like a little view here of this beautiful sign in Venice, so I can show the people all over the world that it's like a blessing. Venice is a blessing to the world. And Venice can be in our hearts and our mind when they're open. And so this is Pacific Avenue. And as we wait on these little street corners, and we see all the other mini me's driving by, we can learn from ourselves that all there is is really love. And everything else is an illusion. When we get hurt, when we get sad, when we forget who we are, it's all a part of the carnival life. You know, we get the e-ticket, we come down to earth, we choose our parents, we choose our adversity, we crack open our heart chakras from wounds to wisdom, and then we celebrate. And that's what like Venice does. Like everybody here in Venice, they're just like. I don't know, it's like Burning Man. They just wear their archetypes everywhere. And so as this little white man says to us, walk, ladies, walk. Walk forward into your life. You have a green light. We can just look around and accept everything that is. The trash, the sand toys that tell us to play and make sand castles, <laughs> right? the flock of birds that fly through the sky with, have, with one mind that move together like a school of fish in the heavens. And when we, when we find our soul families, we can start to see our, mm, our true reflections, our monad, the souls that are the closest to our petals of the flower of life. It's like every soul is a little tiny petal. Everything is art. Every soul is a petal and as the souls overlap on the rosebud, what happens is, is we feel connected and we feel seen and heard. And you know what? I see you. <laughs> I see your art. I see the heart and your art on the back of your shirt, your tie-dye. You put a heart on your back. And on, on, the, on the body, you have the chakras, right? Let's say the seven main chakras. Well, there's a front chakra and a back chakra and that's the back of your heart and that heart is exactly over the back of your heart. Aww. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, that's good. Okay, now this is telling us that we are going to do surfing soon today because we're getting in shape. There's some surfboards and you're from Hawaii and tell me the most magical thing about Hawaii. Um, the air is just smells really good and it's like heavy you can like feel like you're walking through space really mm -hmm. like the prana is like really dense i always felt like i was on another planet i only got to go to the um big islands on hawaii yeah and i felt like i was on the moon because of the lava <laughs> it is like that it is like that it's like a totally different reality it is a different reality that's for sure it's beautiful. It's beautiful there. It smells like flowers. How, how many years did you live there? Um, 17, 17 years. That's amazing. All right, well, we'll be going back there soon. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to do a surf camp in Hawaii. Oh my okay? gosh, yes. You're going to be teaching because I don't know how to surf yet. <laughs> We'll know how to surf by then. It's very easy. Oh, good, good. We're we'll be popping we're gonna, up in no time. We're going to be working on our pop-ups. <laughs> okay, so um, we're going to close this uh, clip, and we're going to be back with raising reverence. How Athena and Somerset are welcoming the magic of Venice in the morning at the beach.
this glorious, glorious beach. Oh, and you know, we saw dolphins last oh, yeah, time. Oh yeah, we did. And we saw two whales. Maybe they'll come visit us again. Yeah, that was nice. So great. All right, well, blessings and light. And may everyone feel shiny and bright. Stay tuned. <laughs>